In June of 1974, President Richard Nixon and his cabinet were bound for Damascus, Syria, on a diplomatic trip to restore political ties with the Arab country. But while Nixon was discussing the precarious situation with his aides, they were suddenly thrown to the floor. Air Force One had banked violently, and seconds later, pilot Colonel Ralph D. Albertazzi told the passengers they were in imminent danger. Four Soviet MiG fighters had just encircled the aircraft, and there was no way out. The flight was about to get rough, and it was now up to the pilot and the maneuverability of the powerful aircraft to outmatch the enemies. America and Syria In 1974, the diplomatic relations between the United States and Syria were dangerously compromised. The focus of the Cold War had slowly been turning toward the Middle East, just as the war on Vietnam was nearing its last days. Moreover, the Soviet Union's influence over these territories was palpable and threatened American regional interests. From the creation of the State of Israel after World War II, the entire region had become a war zone between European migrants and Middle East natives. Both superpowers, along with other European countries, played their cards to gain influence, leading to military and economic assistance. The diplomatic relations between America and Syria had started falling apart in 1967 after the Six-Day War between Israel and a coalition of Arab states, especially Syria, Egypt, and Jordan. But they further deteriorated with the subsequent Fourth Arab-Israeli War of 1974. Nonetheless, the agreement and disengagement signed between the combatants opened the door to restoring the lost ties between Washington and Damascus in hopes of reinstating peace in the region. Soon, Nixon's administration organized a diplomatic trip to Damascus to meet President Hafez al-Assad as part of a multi-leg trip through the Middle East. The Syrian president accepted, and both nations began preparations for the trip. Air Force One In June of 1974, President Nixon took to the skies aboard a reliable Boeing VC-137C. Every aircraft carrying the President of the United States is designated with the call sign Air Force One, a term that dates back to the early 1950s, when a Lockheed Constellation carrying President Dwight D. Eisenhower encountered another plane in the same airspace with the same flight number. Columbine 2, one of two Lockheed C-121s introduced by Eisenhower, was the first aircraft to bear the iconic call sign. Soon, three Boeing 707 jet aircraft, designated SAM or Special Air Missions 970, 971, and 972, became the carriers of the American president, while several Boeing C-137 Stratoliners became President John F. Kennedy's aircraft during his numerous journeys. In October of 1962, Kennedy received a modified long-range Boeing BC-137C Stratoliner, designated SAM-26000, which would remain in service from 1962 to 1998. Success of this aircraft led President Nixon to replace it and use it as a backup Air Force One in December of 1972, with SAM-27000 for his personal use. Nixon's Air Force One had a length of 152 feet, a wingspan of 145 feet, a height of 42 feet, and a wing area of over 3,010 square feet. It also had a gross weight of 297,000 pounds and a maximum weight of 327,000 pounds, and was powered by four Pratt & Whitney TF-33 PW-102 turbofan engines, producing over 8,000 pounds of force thrust each. These engines allowed Nixon's Air Force One to reach a maximum speed of up to 627 miles per hour. The aircraft's cruising speed was 600 miles, its range was over 7,600 miles, its service ceiling was 50,000 feet, and its climb rate was 4,900 feet per minute. Syrian MiGs In February of 1958, Syria and Egypt joined forces to create the United Arab Republic, integrating the Syrian and Egyptian air forces into the United Arab Republic Air Force. As such, most of the Syrian pilots and aircraft were relocated to Egypt. However, the Arab Union was short-lived and ceased to exist following the 1961 Syrian coup of disgruntled army officers. 
the Syrian Arab Air Force was eventually born again and integrated with over 40 MiG-17Fs and several Ilyushin IL-28 jet bombers. It then grew stronger after sealing an order of more than 30 MiG-21 jet fighters and MiG-21U trainers. Most of these Soviet-made aircraft saw action during the Six-Day War against the State of Israel in June of 1967. But despite conducting several successful airstrikes in northern Israel, the Syrian forces had to be relocated after Israel destroyed some of their air bases. Even so, Syria continued buying more MiG-17s and MiG-21s from the USSR and East Germany. And in early 1973, the Syrian Air Force was strengthened by the scheduled delivery of about 100 MiG-21M MFs throughout the year. The aircraft were then used during the Yom Kippur War, or the Fourth Arab-Israeli War, in October of 1973. Like the last conflict, the Syrians had the upper hand during the early stages of the conflict, but they were again decimated by the Israeli aircraft after their airbases were attacked. During dogfights, the seasoned Israeli pilots also proved superior to the Syrians, which led to more losses. Nevertheless, the Soviets launched an air bridge to Aleppo and Damascus, leading to the delivery of more MiG-17s and MiG-21s. Finally, in early 1974, Syria received its first batch of MiG-23 fighter bombers, the latest aircraft the Soviet Union had to offer. Evasive Maneuvers Air Force One, or SAM-27000, carrying President Nixon, approached Syrian airspace on June 15, 1974. The aircraft was bound for Damascus, and Nixon and his cabinet were hard at work discussing the topics to be addressed with President Hafez al-Assad. Besides resuming diplomatic ties, Nixon's administration sought to ease the tensions between the Arab countries and Israel. They knew it was not going to be easy, but it was of the utmost importance to forging long-term peace between the nations. For Nixon, it would be a considerable political triumph amidst the scandals surrounding his administration, especially regarding the Vietnam War and the Watergate tapes. While the President and his cabinet discussed these matters surrounded by the commodities of Air Force One, something unexpected occurred. So far, the flight to Syria had been a comfortable one, but suddenly, four camouflaged Soviet-made MiGs appeared out of nowhere and began taking positions around Air Force One. Pilot Colonel Ralph D. Albertazzi immediately pondered his next actions from the cockpit, as he could not determine if the aircraft were MiG-17s or MiG-21s. Even so, something was certain. They were Soviet fighters, and neither the crew nor he had been told anything about a Syrian escort. While the President and his aides were completely unaware of what was happening, they soon realized something was wrong, as they were all violently thrown to the floor after Colonel Albertazzi banked right. It was then that they realized they were being followed by Soviet aircraft. Air Force One was in the middle of nowhere, with no escort or allied bases nearby. It was now up to the crew to save everyone inside. Nixon's Demise The following seven minutes were filled with tension, uncertainty, and the threat of being shot down. Colonel Albertazzi used all his flying skills to perform evasive maneuvers and steep dives. Fortunately, Air Force One had aerobatics in its genes, as Linda Shiner from the Air and Space magazine described it, and Albertazzi certainly gave the MiGs something to do. SAM-27000 was, after all, a modified version of the same Boeing 707 that test pilot Alvin M. Tex Johnston boldly barrel-rolled during its prototype phase. Before Albertazzi was about to give up, air traffic control informed Air Force One that the MiGs were Syrian and friendly, and that they were sent as an honor escort for the President of the United States. Apparently, neither the Syrian Air Force nor White House officials had bothered to relay this information to Albertazzi or the flight crew. After being notified, Air Force One arrived safely in Damascus, where Nixon was formally met by his Syrian counterpart. SAM-27000 Nixon and his staff never publicly recounted the grave misunderstanding until decades later. Following the escalation of the Watergate scandal, President Nixon decided to resign from the presidency. Shortly after doing so, he boarded SAM-27000. Colonel Albertazzi then contacted air traffic control 
to report that the airplane's call sign had changed from Air Force One to SAM 27000. He did so while Gerald Ford was sworn in as president and Nixon was still in flight. The New York Times reported that Colonel Albertazzi contacted air traffic control while flying over Jefferson County, Missouri, and said, quote, Kansas City, this was Air Force One. Will you change our call sign to Sierra Alpha Mike 27000? ATC responded, quote, Roger, Sierra Alpha Mike 27000. Good luck to the president. SAM 27000 would then fly every president of the U.S. except for Obama. Its last flight was on August 29, 2001, when it flew President Bush from San Antonio to Waco, Texas. Thank you for watching our Dark Skies video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting content about historical events and tales of heroism. Also, please give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos, which we publish regularly. Stay tuned.